You know, the other day on radio, I said, how come they never do a show? Nobody ever does a show on TV about these men from 1861 to 1865. Who were all these men and boys that fought for the North in the Civil War? Who were they? The overwhelming majority of them were Christian. The overwhelming majority of them were white white Christian men who fought for the North, for the Union, against slavery during the Civil War in the most horrendous battles this nation ever faced. More casualties by far than World War II. Over 700,000, both sides, of course, all Americans. But isn't it interesting, critical race theory, Joy Reid, MSNBC, who were these white Christian men and boys who were lined up against the Confederacy? In some battles, they were just mowed down in the most grotesque ways. They didn't own slaves. Some of them never met a black person. There weren't a lot of black people in the North back then. Some, of course. Just not a ton. You had white men and boys coming out of the most northern parts of the country in New England who'd never, who'd never gone past Philadelphia. In these battles, they would go into the Deep South on many occasions. These, these men and these boys, almost all of them used to put little notes in their pockets before a battle to their loved one or their loved ones, their family, because they didn't think they'd make it. And then, you know, if you were badly wounded then, you typically died. Obviously, they didn't have the technology today. And it was horrendous when they cut off limbs. You could hear these men screaming on the battlefield when they were wounded. You could hear them screaming when they were being uh, operated on, and many times the operations killed them. They didn't have anesthesia. They gave him a swig of booze. The stench from the battlefield of the dead bodies and the dead horses and, and other animals was unbelievable. To go back and bury them or to move those bodies, think about it. Thousands and thousands, every single battle, every single battle. And Lincoln would not give up until the North won. They told them to sue for peace. Give them their country. Give them part of the South. I can hear the rhinos and the never Trumpers now, you know. But anyway, he said no. And so you had these men and boys, mostly Christian, mostly white, fighting to end slavery, to keep the Union together. And if the Union had not been kept together, Slavery would have continued in the areas, states, and territories where it was being practiced. Because even after the Civil War, Grant had to send the Army, the U.S. Army, into the South to try and obliterate the Klan, which had gotten big and strong from ex-senior officials and then others who had been defeated in the Confederacy. And he would have wiped them out, but for the fact, ready for this, guys? The Democrats took over the House of Representatives in his second term. So they wouldn't support him sending the military back down there. It's always the Democrats, isn't it? So when I hear this stuff about the white society, the white this, how does that explain the Civil War? Oh, I'm sure they have some perverse idea. How does it explain it? And how does it explain Lincoln? Lincoln did more. For this country, white or black, but especially the slaves, African Americans, and any human being on the face of the earth, more than any human being on the face of the earth. And you know what happened two summers ago? They trashed a statue in one of the cities. They pulled it down. Because before he became president, he had different ideas about what should be done to the slaves if they're free, maybe send back to Africa. You see Liberia and Africa and so forth. But that's not where he ended up. Lincoln did more than any other human being on the face of the earth. A president. Why did he do that in a white dominant society? Elected 
president of the United States? Why did he do that if America is so awful? Why did all those men and boys fight? So many of them perished in horrible ways. You ever go to these battlefields? You ever look at the battlefield pictures where these, these bodies are lined up and they have to dig these big trenches to, to bury them so disease doesn't spread and so forth and so on? You ever see that? Of course you have. Well, that doesn't look like a completely white dominant society that doesn't care about other human beings in the country, does it? No, I don't think so. Joy Reid, uh, this uh, 1619 project, Michael Eric Dyson, John Capehart, they're not alone, of course, the entire management at, uh, at MSNBC, CNN, Comcast, and AT&T, most of which are white, they're a disgrace. They don't teach American history. Kwame Brown is exactly right. These people are very wealthy. They don't suffer. They don't live in the communities they claim to represent and care about for the most part. They do very little to help those communities. Maybe they'll send them a few bucks. That's about it. Not much more. And I speak of black and white and everything in between. Want to see more? Sign up for Levin TV.